Moving on from privacy, we get into uh, a couple of concepts and uh, a few more related concepts, um, particularly relevant to um, civil lawsuits, injuries, um, uh, but uh, may drift over into criminal law sometime. And these are the concepts of liability and negligence. Now, um, if you are liable, to, to be liable, um, if someone suffers some kind of injury, some kind of harm, some kind of loss, and you did something uh, that was not necessarily criminal, but contributed to or caused that loss or harm, then you are liable. Uh, in that case, that would be uh, known as commission, uh, when you actually do something that caused the harm. But there is also the situation where there is something you could have done that would have prevented the harm which you didn't do and that is omission and you can also be found liable for something you didn't do if it's reasonable to expect that a prudent person would have done this and avoided the harm or loss so those are the the general concepts. And then we go into all kinds of areas from there. Uh, so, it, well, we've already covered the omission and commission part, you know, whether you did it or didn't do something. Um, and then there is a, a couple of related concepts called due care and due diligence. Um, now, due care, uh, you, you need to take due care. You, you need to take reasonable precautions. Um, and if you do not take due care, then you are negligent. Um, you, that's, you know, more often the sin of omission, where, um, you haven't taken due care, um, therefore you haven't done something which could have been reasonably expected to prevent the loss or harm. So, uh, there is that. Now, <laughs> There are these two related terms, due care and due diligence. And um, for the purposes of the exam, I would suggest that you consider them as pretty much equivalent. Um, there does seem to be some disagreement in, in legal circles themselves as to whether or not they are equivalent. Um, when you go to law dictionaries, um, legal dictionaries, uh, some of them will make a distinction and some of them will not. So some of them are saying, yes, it's the same thing. Some of them are saying that there is a difference. Um, for those that, uh, suggest that there's a difference, the difference tends to turn on due care being what you did, due diligence turning on either general documentation as to what you did or um, uh, the, the documentation on which you based your uh, decisions about whether or not a particular uh, action was due care or not. Um, so, in, in a sense, um, 
due care is what you did. Due diligence, if there's a difference, is how you prove that you did it. That, that what you did was, in fact, due care. Um, so we need to uh, consider those uh, factors and, and make sure that we do take due care um, and are not negligent. Okay, and how do we get into negligence? Um, okay, uh, story uh, goes back uh, quite a ways. Um, this goes back to the time when ships did not have, on a regular basis, radios. Um, the, it took place on the Great Lakes. Um, it was a shipping company. They were pulling a barge, you know, a very large, uh, well, nowadays we call it a tug. I don't know if it was described that way at that time. But anyways, so they're pulling a barge. Um, they do not have a radio. Storm comes up. Barge gets swamped, goes down. Uh, they lose all that, you know, the barge and all the contents. So, if they have insurance, they go to the insurance company. The insurance company, you know, say to the insurance company, you owe us this much money for all this loss. The insurance company says no. Ends up in court, and the insurance company says they didn't have a radio on board. If they had a radio on board, they would have been able to contact somebody, get the information that a storm was coming, and they they could have pulled into port and saved this loss. Uh, so they're, they're making an argument that, uh, you know, due care was not taken because uh, the, you know, uh, a radio could have prevented this. But as I say, you know, this is in the days when uh, you know, radio was specialized. You had to have a radio operator. Um, it, you know, not everybody had them, uh, and uh, so that's that's the argument that the shipping company makes in court. You know, nobody has a radio uh, on. You know, I I mean, this is close to the time when the Titanic went down. The Titanic, um, when you you know read the details of it, um, you know they they could have contacted uh, other ships in the area closer than the ones that, that initially responded. Um, but, again, uh, not everybody had a radio. Those that did, that radio was there primarily so that the rich passengers could send very expensive business telegrams so that they could make, uh, you know, get news, make business decisions, make business directions while they're crossing the North Atlantic. And when the business passengers uh, are partying in the evening, the radio operator goes off shift because there's nobody going to be paying to send telegrams, so there's no need for a radio operator. So, you know, this is the kind of argument that the shipping company would be making. You know, we did take due care. Uh, this is, you know, due diligence uh, says that nobody has a radio. Um, the court found that, uh, you know, for the insurance company, the shipping company didn't get their money. The insurance company didn't have to pay out because, so the court decision reads, that uh, the technology existed and just because everybody goes and jumps off a cliff, you don't have to go and jump off a cliff. Well, not quite that, but it says, you know, okay, uh, nobody is, you know, very, very few people are staffing ships with radio operators for these purposes, but the cost of a radio and a radio operator is not very high in comparison to the loss of the barge and all the cargo. So do care. The prudent person would have 
ensured that there was a radio operator on board. So what they're saying is that the technology, if the technology exists, if the technology is not overwhelmingly expensive, you need to have that technology provide those functions. And, and so, you know, again, going back to crypto, um, this means that we may have to provide encryption for some areas, such as privacy, if we can, even though most people are not providing it.